around 100 Australian firefighters have made their way through check-in and security and are now boarding flights to the United States where they'll spend the next six weeks fighting deadly wildfires. The United States formally requested the help of Australia earlier this week. They needed a range of specialists, including chopper pilots, air traffic control and bulldozer operators, to tackle some of the worst blazes in Northern California, Oregon and Washington State. The firefighters we've spoken to this morning say they might have only got the call up a few days ago, but they're ready and happy to help. We can bring in the oceanic rain and we need to be conscious it's not about delivering rain on land, it's about nurturing a rain system that can promote agriculture and protect the people involved. So in all cases we want to make sure we don't get flooding but we can deliver timely rain in a gentle soaking manner into agricultural targets. Technology relies on a signal that, we've, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. So we're able to observe this using satellite meteorology, extensively available now to everyone who's got access to broadband internet. But we're able to um, utilize that signal sent in sequence to generate an um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. So the source is the ocean, of course. The vapor, um, precipitable moisture flow is in the atmosphere. The winds drive this with the pressure systems adjusting the path of least resistance. But our technology is able to interface that and hack into it, if you like, and make some micro adjustments to allow deviations to occur in the flow pathways. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires of Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2007 and snow for the first time in history in 2004 in United Arab Emirates. There's been other projects above the radar and some under the radar, but today for the first time we're putting our hand up in front of the media to say this is available. We're going to run this project here to break the drought in the Horn of Africa. An average rain cloud contains about 8 million tons of rainwater and therefore there's a vast quantity of untapped fresh water in the sky and this is where cloud seeding comes in to address the growing needs for water around the world. Most rainmaking techniques used today originated back in 1946 when scientists discovered that by dropping particles of a chemical called silver iodide into cloud tops, they could trigger rainfall. Since then, countries all over the world have experimented with different ways to squeeze rain out of the clouds. China spends more on cloud seeding than any other country in the world. And our official rain making team based in Hat Yai has been instructed to step up cloud seeding in an effort to extinguish forest fires at Prutodang Forest in Narathiwa province. 
Mr. Le Sakriu Tragun Paibun, Director General of the Royal Rain Making and Agricultural Aviation Department, said Monday that the Air Force had provided one aircraft to help in the rain making effort and to follow up on weather conditions. He said the Hat Yai Base team would step up cloud seeding and try to contain raining on the mountains to the east side of Pruto Dang Peat Forest. To ensure that rains would fall directly onto the peat forest, he pointed out that it was necessary for the peat forest to absorb the rainwater in order to put out the underground fire, which has been simmering for several days. As for the forest fires at Doi Su Te Pui National Park, Mr. Le Sak said although the fires were under control, rainmaking operations would continue for a while. To ensure that the fires would not recur. The KXOY4 Fire Watch coverage: This Angel Springs fire near Davenport started last night. It has been growing rapidly ever since. It has grown now 21 times the size it was yesterday, engulfing 3,600 acres. Lincoln County sheriffs say that there are new level two evacuations. That means get ready to go. Those are in the purple lines that you see on this map. New level three evacuations. Those are mandatory. You must leave now. They are in place for Mill Canyon, Bald Ridge, Bull Run, and Little Falls Dam areas, and those are in green. Hawk Hammer has more. We were down near the fire line earlier this morning. This fire is moving rapidly. It's jumped the canyon. We saw it centered on yesterday, leaving a black trail of burnout behind it. Firefighters here at the incident command post working around the clock now to keep up with this fire. In what has become a critical component of the Angel Springs firefight, air crews navigated the cloud of gray smoke over Davenport today, bolstering the ongoing efforts from crews on the ground. Today's main focus: protect homes. Do what they can. Resources are, are scarce. We're in the height of fire season. There's multiple large fires in the state of Washington. Level three mandatory evacuations have been in place all day. Folks left homeless, worrying, what will be there when they come back. It's exhausting and stressful for people that are in it. But true to the spirit of small town Davenport, they aren't alone. The amount of people that show up to help, it's it's impressive. They drop everything, they hook their trailers up, and they wait to be told where to go. Cecilia Hostel is one of those looking out. Her trailers hooked up, ready to go, and she's been busy. The lady yesterday, she just she was so panicked. Like when she got there, she didn't know which direction to turn and where to go and how to get it done. And her response: Get your pets, your dogs, your cats. Your important paperwork, and then get to safety. We'll take care of the horses. We'll give them food. We'll get them water. We'll take care of them. You take care of you. She's put 60 miles on her trailer since the fire started. No stranger to the county fairgrounds, where animals and those folks who've been evacuated can stay. The outpouring of the community is huge, and it really, truly means a lot to the people that. Are are in the situation to know that so many people care and help a friend, help a neighbor, help an animal in need. Because as this fire grows, it's going to take a community. It's nerve wracking because it's only about a canyon away from our place, and if the wind switches, we're going to be in the same situation. And the latest from out here in Davenport, the Type Three Incident Command Team running things now is being replaced by a Type Two Incident Command Team. They're more equipped to handle more complex fires. They're on their way from Oregon right now. Oh, geez, Laurel, uh, you're, you are absolutely correct. Right now, we're just to the south of Dufer, and we can tell you that this fire has already burned 10,000 acres. Hard to believe. Let me step out of the way and give you a live look here at some of the flames and some of the smoke from the South Valley fire. Again, we're just south of Dufer. This is just devastating. This fire is very close to the substation fire from a couple of weeks ago. We know how bad that one was. This community could really use a break. From Sky 8, a scene becoming all too familiar: a wildfire devouring structure after structure, while threatening many more, like the home of Colby Bales. It's definitely been a long summer. There's been a lot of fires going on. Bales put sprinklers on the roof of his family's home. The flames just too close for comfort. Right now, this is a current threat, and then right now, there's stuff going on in the back as well. So we're just trying to stop that. The fire, believed to be human caused, started early Wednesday afternoon. We spoke to a woman who raced out of harm's way as farmers raced towards the danger. 
they're just awesome and I just think they should have recognition because half half these fires would probably be a lot worse if they didn't jump on it. And despite the hard, dangerous work on the ground and in the air, strong winds pushed the South Valley fire to a whopping 3,000 acres in a matter of hours. Several hundred of the burned acres are owned by Paul Shano. We live with fires. I mean, that's part of the wheat industry. You get half fires, but nothing like these have been. These have just been terrible. Terrible indeed. A countless number of homes are in one of the three evacuation zones. All some people can do is rely on their faith. And I've been praying, as many other people are praying, God, please let the wind light up, you know, lighten the wind up for us. I'm Giacomo Luca in Lake County, California. Firefighters here battling blazes on two fronts. To the north, the ranch fire. To the south, the river fire. Now being called the Mendocino Complex, 12,000 homes, businesses, and other buildings are threatened. Thousands of people have evacuated as crews battle high temperatures, dry brush, and winds creating extreme fire conditions. How long do you think until things get back to normal? Gosh, um, I'm not sure what normal is after this, after four years of this. This is, uh, I've heard it said this is the new normal, and that certainly seems to be um, the way it is. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires of Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. And our official rainmaking team based in Hat Yai has been instructed to step up cloud seeding in an effort to extinguish forest fires at Pruto Dang Forest in Naratiwa province. Watch the biggest concern for firefighters this weekend, red flag warnings because of the warm, windy weather. In just the past 15 minutes, new mandatory evacuation orders in Lake County due to the Ranch and River fires. This is for the Lucerne, Pepperwood, Grove, Paradise Valley, Glen Haven, and Clear Lake Oaks areas. The fires also forced new evacuations in Calusa County this morning. Top story at 6.30, a pair of large wildfires has expanded, forcing new evacuations in Lake and Calusa counties. Together, the ranch and river fires have burned nearly 315 square miles and destroyed 55 homes. It is now the largest active inferno in California, surpassing the car fire farther north. KPX 5's Andrea Borba joins us from the Lake County community of Lucerne, right along Clear Lake. Andrea. Well, Juliet, Brian, we just spoke to Cal Fire talking about this the ranch fire, which is right behind me. They say at this point it has four different heads. It is moving in multiple directions. The wind is not helping them. At the moment, the wind is coming from the west and pushing east. And you can see the ridge line up there. You can see where the red retardant has already been laid down by wave after wave of aircraft from Cal Fire and the U.S. Forest Service and Cal OES at this point trying to stop the forward march. The fire jumped around ridge line last night jumped a fire break they're trying to get ahead on it they say at this point Every time an ember flies, you have a spot fire. It's a 100% chance they are dealing with very tough fuel loads up there. We're talking fir trees, we're talking oak, we're talking what they call obnoxious brush at this point. It's very thick on the ground and it is very dry from years of drought up here. They are making a stand trying to save the town of Lucerne right now. There's a lot of homes here, but the real concern on the ranch fire is the fact that this is pushing east. They say if it jumps one more ridge line, it's headed straight for a valley of homes on its march to believe it or not interstate five at this point. Well, crews are working to contain dozens of out of control fires burning across the country right now. In Ontario, teams are steadily pushing back against the Perry Sound 33 fire. It's now creeping just kilometers away from the Trans-Canada Highway. Evacuation orders have been extended in the area. Weather was on the side of crews fighting the fire from the perimeter and the air yesterday, but there are concerns that dry heat may test those lines there and throughout the province. 
today. The fire was getting uh, out of hand. I mean, it was to the point where you could hardly breathe. The, the, the fire was that intense, the heat was that intense. There was a fire tornado that wrapped a piece of steel around a tree. And they said the winds had to have been over 200 miles an hour for that to happen. And I've never seen anything like that here. It's, it was very scary. This will be history. This is the worst fire I've ever seen here, ever. Uh, I don't know how I could get any worse than this. There's gonna be a lot of people that without money it's gonna cost a lot. I went to my mom's and they were all in a panic and then the, by the next morning it didn't seem like it was real yet. There was smoke, but that was it. And then I tried to get back home and it was, oh God, the second night about dark. It was like an inferno, we couldn't even get close. And my car burnt down. Um, it was at the deli and um, we couldn't get through. So my car is a total loss. I, I'm just getting through one day at a time, getting back and forth to work, um, wondering when I can get into my place, wondering when my mom's going to be back home. It's been a nightmare. These are the white buses that are cruising all over Reading. They're unmarked completely. There's like three, four of them. Got the government logo on the back, the license plate. Tinted windows. Oh, metal something in the back there. People loaded up on them. Military, huh? Huh? Military. Uh, we're on South Bonneview. That's South Bonneview. The car fires right over that way. Running into town. Can't really see anything, all the smoke. But those buses are driving around. There's only probably maybe six, five people in the bus, but those buses are cruising around all up and down the fire and everything. This shit, they're up to something. Excuse me. I'm uh, doing some stuff for YouTube on the fire stuff and everything and stuff like that. I don't have any info. Nothing? Have you seen a single airplane or helicopter in the air all day today? I don't know. Not I a haven't been paying attention. No? You haven't heard anything at all? No? Who, um, who are you working for? Um... Sorry, bud. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my company doesn't want me to specify anything, so. That's perfect. That's what I need to. That's what I need to hear right there. So, like the firefighters aren't allowed to fight it. Nobody's flying anything, doing anything to fight it. The FEMA's here doing something. The military's out there blocking off everything. So, yeah, we're just I, trying to. I don't know what's going on. I, I'm from Seattle, so. Perfect. Yeah, most of them aren't local. Almost all of them aren't local. None of them are local. I, I, don't, I don't even know half the info. <laughs> perfect. That's what we're looking for. Thank you. These new fellas, I was just curious, since you're firefighters, what's the reason for not having any, I haven't seen a plane or a helicopter in three days, like? Visibility. Visibility? Mm -hmm. The skies are clear almost, I can see every star uh, all around. I lived here my whole life, and you can see every um, star at night, and then in the morning, it's like they're, they're like purposely restarting yeah. the blaze or something. And visibility, and you can see, so far, like, there's like news talk. What the hell? We're getting bombed. Hey, look how it's not moving. What the hell is that, dude? It's not moving. Bro, that's not Bro. What the fuck? That's trippy. It's moving sideways, you see it? More than 700 firefighters have been battling to contain a forest fire in southern Portugal as the heat wave across Europe continues. 
It started on Saturday as temperatures reached 46 degrees in places close to the country's national record of 47.4. Authorities evacuated two villages in the hilly Monchique area and 10 aircraft carrying water were brought in to fight the flames. Last year, 114 people were killed in two massive wildfires in Portugal. Civil protection officials have sent text alerts warning people of an extreme risk of fire in some regions. Temperatures in Spain and Portugal will remain above 40 degrees until Sunday at least. It's been the most severe heat wave in Iberia since 2003, one of the worst years on record for forest fires. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires of Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2007 and snow for the first time in history in 2004 in United Arab Emirates. And our official rainmaking team based in Hat Yai has been instructed to step up cloud seeding in an effort to extinguish forest fires at Prutodang Forest in Narathiwa province.